everybody, welcome to hello, hello. Uh, Pops React. Uh, you've got a history reaction today, uh, yeah. looking back at the bomber. 666, the outrageous custom modified B-17 uh, with its 16.5 caliber machine guns, mate. So it'd be interesting to uh, look back on this and yep. the modifications to it. And a bit of history as well, which likes to fill in these blanks up here. And believe me, there's a lot oh, of Oh, there's them. plenty of room up there <laughs> for more blanks. Um, okay, so we've got, uh, well, first of all, Bomber number 666, I mean, triple six, uh, number of the beasts, all that sort of thing. So um, uh, mm -hmm. obviously given that number for a reason. Uh, the Boeing B-17 Flying Fortress, American four-engined heavy bomber developed in the 1930s for the U.S. Air Corps. <sighs> Over a hundred years old? No, it's not. I oh, know, mate. Fast yeah, and high-flying no, bomber. Not quite. Another another six years. Uh, the B-17 was used primarily in the uh, European theatre of operations and dropped more bombs than any other aircraft during World War II. Uh, as of November 2022, only four aircraft remain airworthy. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. Well, let's get into it then. With 16... In oh, 1943, no, 16, a B-17 flying fortress laid low in a boneyard ready to be torn apart for scraps. So it's got the aircraft came with a questionable reputation, cows. having suffered heavy damage during its warfare missions. Many believe this was due to its ominous tail number, 41-2666. But the aircraft was salvaged by a group of nine so-called military renegades led by pilot Jay Zemer. Renamed as Old 666, the misfits put so many weapons on the aircraft that it looked almost comical, and the plane became the most heavily armored bomber in the Pacific. <laughs> during one dangerous operation over New Guinea, the heavily armored B-17 put all its weaponry to good use, taking part in one of the most decorated missions in American military history. Crazy. This, this is a uh, YouTube channel, Dark. Uh, Old 666 Dark channel lived a lonely too. life, often flying alone. Such was the nature of roaming the sea with miles between islands Look and naval fleets. That. Learn more about this unique theater of war and the U.S.'s battle with Japan in the Magellan TV series World War II in the Pacific. Magellan TV is a new type of documentary streaming membership created by filmmakers that brings over 3,000 documentaries to all of your devices, which continue to be added on a weekly basis. So okay. Eager Beavers. In August 1942, 23-year-old Jay Zemer Jr., when a reckless co-pilot who wanted to become a pilot in command, was transferred to the 403rd Bomb Squadron, 43rd Bomb Group, didn't to fly B-17 flying fortresses. No. Zemer then ran into his old friend, the squadron's bombardier, Sergeant Joe Sarnowski. During a combat mission in November of 1942, Zimmer was forced to take over as first pilot after some crew members were injured. The operation was a success, and he was promoted to pilot in command. Because of his bravery and quick thinking, Zimmer also earned a silver star. Good Despite job. now being first pilot, Zimmer had no plane nor crew. After convincing Sergeant Sarnowski to be his bombardier and navigator, the two friends began to assemble the rest of the team. The plan was to test their compatibility on several daring missions. Many crew members refused to fly with Zemer and Sarnowski again after just one mission. Oh. But some fellow rebels withstood the men's antics and ultimately rounded out the team. The crew became known as the Eager Beavers, as they Eager frequently Beavers. volunteered for missions as they became available. The Beavers still had no aircraft of their own. Due to their rowdiness and dislike of military discipline, the group was at the bottom of the list when it came time to be assigned new aircraft. The they had no choice but to manage with whatever they could find. Old 666. That not make sense, does it? No. In 1943, the 43rd Bomb Group relocated to Port Moresby, New Guinea, as part of the 65th Bomb Squadron. The perfect aircraft for the rowdy Memphis eager beavers Bell. awaited them at the new post. Jay Zemer stumbled upon an abandoned plane in a boneyard, ready to be cannibalized for scraps. This B-17 flying fortress also had a wild reputation of its own. Known as Hard Luck Hattie, I the mean, aircraft had suffered heavy damage during its previous missions. There, mate, Many people it's believed like it's misfortune Star Wars, was due it? to its ominous tail number. 41-2666. That's it, you got to put the guy in Zimmer managed to salvage the aircraft out. and had it shipped to Port Moresby for improvements. The crew doubled the number of guns on the Flying Fortress from 10 to 19, substituted its single guns with twin ones, increased their caliber from 30 to 50, and added a fixed gun atop the pilot station. Guy in the, front the Eager Beavers put so many well. weapons on the aircraft that it looked like an industrial porcupine. <laughs> At the time, B-17 became the most heavily armed bomber in the Pacific, with its 19 50 caliber machine guns. 1950 cows. Because the aircraft modifications took so long to finish, it didn't get granted nose art or a nickname as is customary. Its only identifying trait was its tail number, so Hard Luck Hattie became Old 666. The crew quickly claimed the aircraft as their own, 
the and Zimmer's team the... continue to volunteer for challenge. See, let's just pause it there because that's a great picture. Isn't uh, yeah, it? I mean that is out. The eager beaver. I mean, look at it. It's a big old beast. Yeah. So obviously you got the the front uh, gunners up there with the two two machine guns sticking out. You can see the, the top front, gunner. You can see the top gunners. Yeah, and there's one sticking up there. Like, there's one just just up on there the as well on the side. Yeah, yeah, you know? on the side. That's just. And uh, the then front. obviously you got the the one underneath. Uh, there's their number of either. That side gunner's got to be good. Don't want to take out your own bloody engine, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I just followed it round. Oh, not again! Sorry, lad. But um, I, again, you know, the, the, uh, always a, there's always a rebellious group that go against the norm, but then they there come is. up with something unique like this, you know. So, uh, yeah, brilliant. I mean, yeah. uh, uh, you know, uh, what what courage in that to you know to do it once, go up and and survive and come back, but then to do repeated missions, getting in something like that, flying around and just unbelievable, really, isn't it? Really, it yeah. is. It is. It's challenging and dangerous assignments. On a mission flying over Papua New Guinea, old six 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 sustained over sixty hits from an enemy anti aircraft device. Still, it was able to land safely and was quickly taken for repair. The eager beavers earned a standing reputation for their daring deeds. Every member of the nine-man crew received silver stars, and two of them earned distinguished flying crosses. Brilliant. Zima received his second silver star for a mission to Wewok in May of 1943, and Sinorsky was promoted to second lieutenant the same month. A daring opportunity. On June 16, 1943, the eager beavers were getting ready for a risky photo mapping mission. PowerPoint presentation. A solo B-17 <laughs> flying fortress would map Bougainvillea's west coast to support a planned invasion in the upcoming fall. The mission required a 22-minute steady-level flight over hostile territory to acquire clear photos of the area. Hours before the crew departed, newly appointed Captain Jay Zemer received a phone call from an operations officer from the 5th Bomber Command. Yeah, now they had just received intel imagery. of increased activity on a yeah. Japanese airfield near Buka Drones. Island, 67 miles north of Bougainvillea, and wanted Zemer to fly over the area too. But Zemer refused. He believed the mission was too dangerous, and that his aircraft would become an yeah. easy target for enemy fire. Yeah, wow. However, when the eager beavers flew over Bougainvillea as planned, there was not enough light to provide the necessary exposure for their camera's infrared filters. Oh, wow. Zima reached for his inner phone and laid out their options for the crew. They could turn northwest and fill in time over a safe zone, or they could head north and perform the Boca Recon mission. The crew unanimously supported their captain. As top turret gunner and eager beaver member Johnny Evil explained, quote, We thought so much of Captain Zima and had such trust in him and his ability that we didn't give a damn where we went, just so long as he wanted wow. to go there. Anything okay by him was okay by us. Amazing. Captain Zimmer yeah, adjusted course and headed through. to Buka Island, ready to take on the most dangerous mission yet. Attack on Buka Island. As the eager beavers flew over Buka Island on their last minute mapping mission, they crossed over 600 miles of Japanese controlled territory. The crew took photos to identify Japanese army strength and possible attack locations for the Allies' upcoming invasion. With only 20 minutes left to finish, the crew was intercepted by Japanese Mitsubishi A6M0 aircraft. In a coordinated attack, five of them enclosed the old 666 from below, two Why? others approached from the rear, and three were spread across the front. The coordination behind the attack did not allow Zemer to execute yeah. his preferred defense tactic, in which he would put the B-17 inside the enemy's line of fire, attacking from the front. The maneuver would expose the aircraft's belly to the other Japanese aircraft. After attempting to hit the old 666's tail, the Zeros attacked the aircraft's nose. It was common knowledge that B-17s were not heavily armed, so the Japanese pilots were surprised to find the aircraft's high-caliber twin machine gun turrets sticking out of the airframe. <laughs> they were. Surprise! The old 666 would not give up without a fight. As the eager beavers counterattacked, they heavily damaged the lead fighter, which returned to base. Captain Zemer hit a zero with the B-17's nose-mounted gun, and Sinorsky downed another one with one of the 19 sets of guns. In retaliation, the zero shot 20mm cannon shells at them tearing through the old 666's cockpit. Zemer was hit, and an exploding cannon in the front compartment knocked Zanorski off. Oh, Heavily wow. injured, the bombardier still dragged himself back to his station and downed another Japanese Zero before succumbing to his wounds. Another aircraft from a second Japanese wave hit the old 666's cockpit again, destroying their oxygen tanks. Zemer pushed the aircraft into a steep dive to 6,000 feet so his crew could breathe. The wow. eager beavers continued to engage the Japanese Zeros without oxygen support and heavily damaged instrument panels. Determined so to return with the valuable photos, point, yeah. an injured Zemer refused to relinquish control of his beloved old 666 and continued to fly it while in excruciating pain. A 
Assuming that the old 666's forward guns were now inoperable, the Japanese Zeros lined up on both sides of the plane and attacked the aircraft from the front. Zemer decided to go for the maneuver that he had been unable to perform during the first attack. The pilot banked hard inside each of the approaching aircraft's firing angles, avoiding the enemy fire and giving his rear gunners unrestricted access to the Zeros as they passed by them. Wow. The tactic worked, and after 40 minutes, the Americans outran the Japanese aircraft and headed straight for their base. 40 minutes. On the way back, wow. Captain Zemer lost consciousness from his wounds. Six out of the nine eager beavers were wounded or perished during the mission, and those who were conscious did what they could to keep the old 666 in the air. The bravest crew in history. When the old 666 landed in the New Guinea base eight hours after departing, its fuselage was riddled with holes, and Zemer Look was barely alive. At the hospital, doctors determined that he had lost almost half the blood in his body. He was hospitalized for several months, but eventually recovered from his injuries. Two weeks after the old 666's fateful mission, Allied forces launched Operation Cartwheel, an offensive in Papua New Guinea. The operation was a success, and top military planners gave high credit to the maps and charts developed from the photographs taken by the Eager Beavers. Wow. For their valor in one of the most prolonged sustained attacks by enemy fighters Crazy. in history, pilot Jay Zemer and Joe Sarnowski were awarded the Medal of Honor. The seven other crewmen, J.T. Britton, William Vaughn, Herbert Pugh, Forrest Dillman, Johnny Abel, Ruby Johnston, and George Kendrick, were awarded the Distinguished Service Cross. Although official Japanese reports reduced the number of fighters that attacked the old 666 crew to seven, Zemer's personal memoirs confirmed that almost two dozen fighters participated in the attack. His Medal of Honor citation reads, quote, While photographing the Buka Airdrome, his crew observed about 20 enemy fighters on the field, many of them taking off. In this voluntary action, Major Zemer, with superb skill, resolution, and courage, accomplished a mission of great value. The yeah. Eager Beavers still remain the most highly decorated combat air crew in American military service. That makes you guys. I mean, you know, to, to, to take on that mission with no sort of fighter plane support as well just once you know um i mean it says here a past and high flying bomber but when you're getting intercepted by fighter fighter planes Different they're not that fast game, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah you know you're you're a courage. bit like it's like trying to outrun bees isn't it or yeah. wasps it, it, it's just you, you know, know but as i say the, the courage and the skill of these guys <clears> from <throat> way back when with sort of you know, fairly basic equipment and gear, you know, uh, outstanding really. So yeah, well done guys. And an uh, interesting history one, that one. Um, the old 666, yes. mate. That's... Yeah, the old 666. Well, I didn't know nothing about the old 666 nope. before we started and now I do. Uh, and what a great bit of history that is. And, yeah, and good footage as well what, that they found there. Good footage of what people yep. had yep. to go through. Um, you know, well done to Dark Skies for putting that together as well. Good job. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that was cool, mate. That was very a cool good bit of history to to be. Anything uh, out there um, that you would like us to look at? I mean, obviously, in in you know uh, English folklore and tales, is the old bouncing bombs. Uh, remember yes. that one? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that that, that film bombs. comes out every year, doesn't it? Oh yes. Uh, uh, you know, so, and again, just remarkable ingenuity to sort of come up with a plan to make something work and and um that, that's what it was all about back then is that how can we do something but if you've got any suggestions of something you think we'd find interesting uh, please let us know in the comments mm, indeed all right uh brilliant mate liked enjoyed that history uh, reaction do let us know as bbc yes. says in the comments uh, until tomorrow, there will be another reaction from us. Until Indeed. then, it's a goodbye from me. And a goodbye from my tail gunner over there. Goodbye. Tally ho. Cheers. I've taken the engine out. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Again. <laughs>